So we'll be talking about the origin of angels, the nature of angels, and the ministry of angels. The origin of angels, the nature of angels, and the ministry of angels. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. We are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. We are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. If we read down further in that Hebrews chapter 12, if we read verse 22, it says, But ye are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Ye are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God and the heavenly Jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels. So he said, we are come to an innumerable company of angels. We are come into an innumerable company of angels. It means angels are our companions. And they are much. We live in the midst of angels. It didn't say we had been. No, it said we are come. We are living in the midst of innumerable company of angels. So angels are meant to help us achieve some things in life. Angels are meant to assist us. On this earth you see angels are meant to give us divine assistant on earth here hallelujah and let's look at the origin of angels Psalms 148 we'll read from verse 1 praise ye the Lord praise ye the Lord from the heavens praise him in the heights praise ye him all his angels Praise ye him, all his hosts. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Praise him, ye heaven of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. You see that? Psalms 148, let's read verse 2 and verse 5 now. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. This means that angels were created. It means God spoke and the angels were created. So, Angels are God's creations. This is the reason why angels refuse worship from humans because they are God's creation. When we read from Revelation chapter 22 and verse 8, and I, John, saw these things and heard them, and when I have heard, and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then said he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant. See, the angel told John, I am your fellow servant, and of thy brethren, the prophets. You see, and of them which keep the saints of this book, worship God. So Revelation chapter 22 and verse 9. The angel told John, do not bow down to worship me and your fellow servant. Worship only God. Therefore, we must learn to appreciate and acknowledge the presence of angels. Angels has helped me in life. Angels has personally helped me. They have revealed themselves to me over and over. Angels have given me instructions. 
on which vehicle not to enter and what vehicle to enter, they appeared as human beings. After they left, we saw that they were, it was an angel that told us not to enter that vehicle. But we did not obey him. You know why? Because he appeared in, in rats like a mechanic. And when he appeared in rags like a mechanic, he told us, do not enter that vehicle. He told myself and my spouse, do not enter that vehicle. And we, we, we did not uh, esteem his words because of the way he appeared. We still entered the vehicle. But how did we know? On the way, the driver of that vehicle was sleeping. This was about 20 years ago or 18 years ago in Benin City, Nigeria. We were going to uh, Oshu State area, and he told us don't enter, and we enter. And the, 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 the driver began to sleep on the way. So angels are, are sent at times by God to give us direction on what to do. And that is why we must be attentive. We must tune our ears most of the time. So even if you see somebody giving you an instruction on the way, don't disdain them. Don't lightly esteem them. Angels must be appreciated and they are, uh, we must acknowledge their presence, especially when God sends them to you always. You see, Abraham was sitting in his tent and they hot have to know. And angels were passing by with the Lord. And he called for them and he entertained them and they gave him the word. And uh, that was how Sarah conceived by the word of the Lord that came through the mouth of the angel. Hallelujah. So we must learn not to provoke them. How do you provoke them? When you doubt them, you are doubting God. When you doubt the angels, you doubt God. Ask Zachariah, John's father, who became dumb because he doubted the angel of the Lord. Luke chapter 1, read from verse 11 to verse 20, the account of how Zachariah doubted the angel of the Lord. And he became dumb until the word that the angel spake manifested. Praise the Lord. So, we must learn not to provoke them. We must learn to believe the angels of the Lord. When you disobey them, you are disobeying God also. When you disobey the angel, you are disobeying God. Ask Lot. Um, Lot's wife would disobey the angel. What happened? She was told not to turn back. None of them should look back. Because that was God's instruction for them. And she looked back and she became what? A pillar of salt. Therefore, if angels were created as we saw, we must believe that they are from God. God will not send you demons. God will send you angels. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When were the angels created? When were the angels created? We have an account here of when the angels were created. Job 38, let's read from verse 4. Job 38 from verse 4. Where was thou when I laid the foundation of the earth? Declare, if thou hast understanding. God is asking Job. Who had laid the measures thereof? If thou knowest, or who has stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof? If thou knowest, declare it. Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Look at that. Verse 7 of Job chapter 38. Let's read verse 7. God is asking Job, when was, Where was thou when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted 
for joy. Talking about the angels. Therefore, when God began to lay the foundation of the earth and started the creation that took place between Genesis chapter 1, verse 3 to 31, the angels were already created. Oh, I repeat that again. Therefore, when God began to lay the foundation of this earth and started the creation that took place between Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, and verse 31, the angels were already created and they were singing and shouting for joy as God would speak the word and the earth began to gain order. Look at what he said in verse 7 of Job 38. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy when God was doing the creation of the earth. Note therefore that there was a raise in operation. There was a raise in operation before this present Adamic raise. It is referred to as the pre-Adamic raise. And where God was in that creation, the angels had been created. Hallelujah. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the water. You see, between verse 1 and verse 2 is a very big gap. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. You see? Then, look at verse 2. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. Something had happened. And the face of the, and the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the water. Hallelujah. So, there was creation in verse 1, as we can see. In verse 2, there is destruction. This destruction happened because Lucifer fell. Lucifer fell to the earth. The whole earth was shut down. No lights, no life. The entire human race, the entire earth was covered with water and with darkness. This was not the flood of Noah. It says, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. When God got ready, he start the creation of this present earth. The Bible says, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If we read from Psalms 104, let's read verse 6 and 7. I want to make these teachings very brief. It says, Thou coverest it with the deep as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains. At thy rebuke, they fled. At the voice of thy thunder, they hasted away. These waters were abated and controlled at God's rebuke. Did you see that? In Psalms 104, you can read from verse 1 to verse 9. But in verse 6, that covers it with the deep as with a garment. The water stood over the mountains. At thy rebuke, they fled. And the voice of thy thunder, they hasted away. These waters were abated and controlled at God's command, at God's rebuke. Remember that the flood of Noah was not rebuked. The flood of Noah 
was not rebuked. It took for the water to evaporate. The waters had to evaporate in the process of time. That's a flood of Noah. But in the previous scripture that we're talking about, the Bible says, at the rebuke of God, the waters were abated. Praise the Lord. So, we're looking at the origin of angels, the nature of angels, and the ministry. We have just looked at the origin of angels, and we've seen that angels were created by God. And angels had pre-existed this present earth. And angels were created before man was created. And the Bible says when God was creating this earth and man, the angels were singing for joy that they are God's creation. And we also read in Revelations how the angel told John not to worship him because he's a, cre he's a creature of God. That's the origin of angels. We're looking at the, the nature of angels. The nature of angels. Angels are revealed to us in three major forms all through the Bible. Angels are re re revealed to us in three major forms all through the scriptures. Number one, angels are revealed to us as supernatural beings. Angels are revealed to us as supernatural beings. We can read that account from Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. It says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his strength filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face. With twain he covered his feet. And with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Hallelujah. It says, Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts, then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hands, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purge. You see, so angels are supernatural beings. Number two, angels are revealed to us in the likeness of men. In the scriptures, we have seen that angels are revealed to us as supernatural beings. Number two, angels are revealed to us in the likeness of men. Let's read from Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heads of salvation? Let's read from verse 13. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heads of salvation? Hallelujah. And so, angels are revealed to us in likeness of men. In Hebrews 13 and verse 2, talking about Abraham, it says, Be not forgetful to entertain 
strangers for thereby some have entertained angels unawares be not forgetful to entertain strangers for thereby some have entertained angels unawares so when we read that account in genesis chapter 32 Genesis 32, verse 1 and verse 2. And Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. Did you see that? Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. Angels are revealed to us in the likeness of men. In one of my services in Nigeria, when I was, we were it was our, our year of angelic visitation. We actually had an angel visited us in the service. But you can feel the glory of God. But I, I didn't ask him if he was an angel. But by the activities of the things he did that day, you will know he's an angel that visited us. He gave us where he came from he told us we could ask of where he came from after he left the service he told us we could visit but i know he's an angel because the visage of his face the glory that was in his face the word that he gave to us at the close of the service you will know this is an angel Hallelujah. So angels appear to us in likeness of men to give us specific messages. And Jacob went on his way and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's host. And he called the name of that place Mahanaim. You read that in Genesis 32 from verse 1 to 2. Genesis 32 from verse 1 to 2. Angels are sent to us to pass messages, to communicate God's intentions to us. When we read also in Judges, let's look at Judges. Judges chapter 13. Judges 13, you can read from verse 1 to verse 2. Judges 13. From verse 1, let's read. And the children of Israel did evil against the sight, again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years. Let's read verse 26. Same chapter, Judges chapter 13, verse 26. Judges 13. Praise the Lord. Judges 13. Okay, let's read verse 16. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, verse 16, Judges 13, verse 16, And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Though thou detain me, I will not eat thy bread. And if thou would offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. For Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. Did you see that? You will not always know that he is an angel. This is how God works. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou dost after my name, seeing it is secret? Did you see? <laughs> because in verse 17 of that Judges 13, And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name? That when thy saying come to pass, we may do thee honor. He didn't know he was an angel. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou dost after my name, seeing it is secret? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So angels, number two way angels are manifested, they have the nature, the likeness of men. Number three, the nature of angels. They are manifested as invisible ministers. Invisible ministers. It says, Behold, I send an angel before thee 
to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Exodus 23, read from verse 20 to 23. Exodus 23, from verse 20 to 23. Hallelujah. So, we have learned that angels are creatures. Angels can only be sustained by God. Angels refuse worship. Angels demanded that they be no worshipped. That was in the account that we read in Revelation concerning John. Yet in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 10, Jesus said to Satan, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou worship. And that was what the angel told John. He said, Worship only God, don't worship me. So, angels are creatures. That is one of the natures of angels. They are creatures of God. Angels are spirits. They are ministering spirits. That's what we read in Hebrews. Angels are ministering spirits. Hallelujah. They are superhumans. They are not human beings. They can be transformed into humans to, to perform specific tasks. Hallelujah. They are not humans, but they have the ability to, to transform themselves into human form to be able to communicate with man. As spirits, they are limited by physical, they are not limited by physical conditions. As spirits, angels are not limited by physical conditions. You see, Manua could not hold that angel. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, why are you detaining me? Angels are spirits. As spirits, they are not limited by physical conditions. Angels appear and disappear as occasion demands. They travel at unimaginable speed. Angels could be transformed in a car. You can see them in a car right away. They're driving a car. You can see them, God sending them to represent you in a particular place. These are things that happen in this world. Praise the Lord. You can have a more read on the angels. Look at the scriptures, Genesis chapter 19 and verse 1, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14, Psalms 104 and verse 4. Who maketh his angels, spirits, his ministers, a flaming fire? God makes his angels, spirits, his ministers, a flaming fire. There is no gender among the angels. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do spirits have gender? <laughs> Praise Master Jesus. Angels are immortal. So, angels are creatures of God. Angels are spirits. Angels are immortal. They are spirits. They cannot die. Jesus says in Luke chapter 20 and verse 36 that in the resurrection, men will be like the angels. They cannot die anymore. So when I say men will be like the angels, men will be like the angels. Because the angels cannot die. Angels are immortal. Angels are mighty and powerful beings. They are the might of God. Angels are mighty. One angel destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. One angel killed the firstborn of Egypt. One angel killed 185,000 Syrians. One angel rolled the stone Hallelujah which 50 soldiers cannot move angels 
are powerful. God fought for Israel using his holy angels. In Joshua chapter 10, read verse 11 and verse 14. Joshua chapter 10, maybe we can gaze in that scripture. Joshua 10, let's read verse 11. And it came to pass, as they fled from before Israel, and were in the going down of Bethron, that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them unto Azekah, and they died. They were more we died with his sons than they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. Let's look at verse 14. And there was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man. For the Lord fought for Israel. God used his angels to rain stones from the heavens against his enemies and God destroyed a lot of people that day praise the Lord angels cast great stones upon their enemies and caused Israel to be victorious in verse 11 so angels are mighty and they are powerful beings. They are not to be tried with or disrespected. Angels are innumerable. We read that in Hebrews chapter 12. It says we are come into the innumerable company of angels. So when you become born again, you come into an innumerable company of angels. It says ye are come unto Mount Zion. When you are born in Mount Zion, when you are born again, you are born into an innumerable company of angels, angels of protection, angels who protect your home, protect your gifts, protect everything about you. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 2 and verse 13, you read Luke 2 and verse 13, read Hebrews chapter 12. And verse 22, read Daniel chapter 7 and verse 10. Number 6, angels have various ranks and orders and roles. Angels have various ranks, orders, and roles. For example, we have the seraphims or the seraphs. We read that in Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1 to 7. Isaiah 6 and verse 1 to 7. And verse 3, it says, And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. These angels reveal the glory of God to the heavens. The seraphs, they reveal the glory of the Lord. One cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. They reveal the glory of the Lord. Then number two ranks of the angels is the cherubims or the cherubs. We read in Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 4 to verse 20 about the cherubs. It says, Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went thither with their spirit to go. These angels respond to the work of the Holy Spirit in heaven. The angels called the cherubims or the cherubs, they, re, re, they respond to the work of the Holy Spirit in the heavens. Hallelujah. Uh, so I'll be cutting this teaching here. We'll be doing part two of the nature, the origin, the nature, and the ministry of angels. So the teaching will not be too long for us. Hallelujah. So we'll be doing part two of the nature, the origin, and the ministry of angels. I will do that tomorrow. God bless us in the name 
of Jesus. Go back and look at the scriptures. And I pray in the name of Jesus. Then the day of angelic manifestations to you, you will not miss it and you will not miss the instructions. And you will obey the instructions that the angels will give to you because they are meant to profit you and to give you light. In Jesus' precious name, amen. So when we meet tomorrow, we'll be talking about the, we'll start from the rank of the angels that we move to the ministry of angels and how we can act activate the ministry of angels in our lives as we as we embark in ministry as we do the work of the lord angels are sent to help us bible says when jesus christ went to pray in the garden of gethsemane the angels came and strengthened him even as he prayed did you see that so even angels minister to Jesus. And in the beginning of his ministry, also angels minister to him. The Bible says, the devil left him and angels came and ministered to him. Angels are sent to help us in ministry. God bless you in Jesus' precious name. Amen.